Hello, you all. Welcome back to Let's Deal With It. Praise the Lord. Wow, it's chilly. It's getting chilly, you all. The seasons are a-changing. Anyway, I was just thinking about how the Lord said, without faith is impossible to please the Lord. And this walk of faith, it cannot be measured or we can't allow it to be interrupted by how things look with our natural eyes. And most times, this is why, thank you, Holy Spirit. The Bible says, the weaker of the two sex is the female. Come on, Holy Spirit. Because as women, as female, we tend to go by things, how we feel, our emotions, amen? And this walk with the Lord, has nothing to do with our emotions. It doesn't because faith is something spiritual. It's, it's not, it, I'm not going to say, let me thank you, Holy Spirit. Say it like you're giving it to me. Faith is spiritual. Our emotions has to do with how we are physically made up. Hear that? So sisters, even brothers, because that's why, you know, the spirit of fear, when fear comes and tries to intimidate us and make us afraid or panic or um, anxiety or any of those, we think there are emotions, but the root of fear is a spirit. Fear is a spirit. It's not an emotion. Mm -mm. So faith has nothing to do with what we see with our natural eyes because faith is a spiritual thing. Just like fear is a spiritual thing. Come on, Holy Spirit. So the Bible says without faith, it's impossible for us to please the Lord. And he said we walk by faith, not by sight. Faith is the word of the Lord. Oh, I'm you guys, I'm 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 teaching to myself right now. Cause this to me, okay, I'll get there. He said, just stay focused. There are things that are physical, and there are things that make the physical things. Words are spiritual. They're not something we can see until they come into being. And that's why the Bible says. Call those things that are not my Lord as if they be so. When we speak something, and I'm not talking about no claiming and blaming. And, no, I'm talking about the principle of heaven. How the Lord tells us without faith, we can't please him. So the way we get faith, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of the Lord. We have to read the Lord's word out loud so that it can fill our hearts, transform our mind, and cause our faith in him to grow in our heart and in our spirits. Amen. Because you can you see your spirit person? Come on, go ahead, Holy Spirit. No, I have never seen my spirit. I know it's in me, the real me. And now I know my soul is real because my soul is my mind, will, and emotions, my passions, my likes, my dislikes. Amen? Yes. So without faith, you all, we can't please the Lord. And we want to be like our brother. I forget his name. Um, He said, Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. So there can be things or areas where we struggle at in our faith of trust in the Lord versus other things. You you see what I'm saying? Like some people have faith for um, healing, faith for deliverance, faith for salvation. Amen. But I already shared with you all, I've always struggled with finances, with um, you all. I, Sometimes I think it's my plight. I don't know. To show that you must stay faithful to the Lord, uh, like uh, brother brother uh, Paul said, I've abound and I've been ab abased. In whatever state I find myself, I am content. So I've been like, now Lord, we not supposed to stay abased all the time. Now, Father, you know I talk to Him this way, 
but the Lord knows what he's doing. He, Because you guys are watching this process with me. Amen. I mean, I'm on display. But guess what? I'm not in fear. Now, do fear, the spirit of fear come to attack me? Yes. And this is where the Lord wants me to come into a pure trust, faith, and hope in him. Amen. Yes, you all. Yes. Yes. Wow. So the Lord said it's impossible to please him without faith. And then he said, whoever comes to him, it says he, but it means whosoever comes to him must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Amen. Yes. So we can have faith and trust and hope in the Lord for many areas of our life, from our health to our finances, to our spouses, to our children getting saved, our spouses healing. God loves every part of our lives. He loves us and he is concerned and interested in whatever concerns and interests us, especially when it comes to salvation, our needs being met, being protected. The Lord loves us, you all. Amen. Yeah, that's good. So see, faith is a spiritual principle. When the Lord said, let there be before he, well, first of all, when he speak, it's already, it's, it's done. This is how amazing faith is and the word of the Lord is. When, for, for the Lord to think something and then speak it, it's going to be. When he said, let there be light, there was light. And he saw that the light was good. So we have to know when we're speaking, and I don't, I'm not talking about no naming and claim it. No, you all. I'm talking about pure faith in the Lord. Amen. Faith that he will deliver, save and heal and set free our children. Amen. This is what I'm talking about. Like a child, like if a child say, mommy, I seen this pretty dress and oh, I want this dress. I want this dress so bad, mama. And you know, you're going to get your child that dress. Amen. She she knows it because she knows her mommy love her and her mommy will do for her and bless her. The Lord want us to be the same way. And I'm talking to me, you all. I'm ooh wee. I'm talking to me. Amen. I'm talking to me, Jesus. I'm trying to find a little clip. I always forget to keep one here. Anyway, so you all, we have to know that the Lord is the Lord. He that comes to Yah must believe that he is Yah. Amen. And I and I don't believe that delay means denial. I learned that from Jack Hayford. Some of you may know him. He is a, a pastor of Church on the Way in Van Nuys, California. I used to attend his ministry for two consecutive years. That's where one of the churches Thomas and I went to. And then our church after that was... um. Church of the Harvest, that's where my two two Jewish pastors, they were both from Israel and they are Messianic believers. Amen. So I remember Pastor Jack Hayford saying, see y'all, I done been to some churches, Bishop Blake, uh, Price, Fred Price, Lord, uh, I done been to some churches. Yes. So anyway, Noel Jones, oh Lord, it, um, it's sad how these pastors have, um, they have abandoned the way of righteousness and holiness and the things of the holy almighty Yahweh. They have, many of them have you all. So anyway, I remember Pastor Jack saying delay doesn't mean denial. But when you ask God for something, and I'm going to get this so you guys can see this was years ago <laughs> okay i i really wish that i would have put the date on it but i know it's over six or seven years old when i wrote this and put it on my refrigerator this thing is old and uh it says to have real not fake because you can't fake i remember pastor Diane used to say this you can't fake faith peace, joy, hope. You can't fake them things. Now, in faith, sometimes you can be stronger in one area than the other. Thank you, Holy Spirit. But he the same, he the same Yahweh of all of them. 
So see, see that he helping me. See you all, when someone is a teacher or a preacher of the word, the holy word of the Lord, it cuts us first. It's supposed to deal with us first. Amen. Yes. Yes. So he is the same Yahweh of all these things he tell us to have and that he's given us. He said he's given every person that comes to believe in and trust in his son a measure of faith. Amen. And faith grows by staying in the word, prayer, um, trusting in the Lord, no matter what it is. Amen. Okay. So I wrote this. I know I've been here four months, I mean, four months, four years and something, about, about seven, eight months, four years and so June, July, August, September. Okay. Yes. About seven, eight months. So four years and seven months. But I wrote this and I brought it with me to this, this home and I wrote it at least, I was there for five years. So I wrote this, I would say seven or eight years ago. Yep. I'm, I'm going to tell the truth. I would say seven years. So I'm saying this because you all, you get tired of struggling in certain areas with the Lord. You're like, wow, I'm, I'm really, I, I've had enough of doubt, unbelief. It's not healthy, nor is the Lord pleased by it. Now, does he get angry with us? No, you all. Because the man in the Bible said, Lord, I believe he had belief and trust in a certain thing about the Lord, but in a certain area, he was struggling. And so the Lord does not shake. He does not despise us, you all, when we struggle. Okay, especially when something has persisted, like the woman with the issue of blood or when somebody's been blind a long time and the Lord give them their sight. Excuse me. The Lord is not like that, but he wants us to come away from doubting and unbelief and, excuse me, to deal with the spirit of fear. And he didn't give us those things. Amen. The Lord loves us. Hallelujah. So, I had wrote this out because I said, Lord, why I'm tired of struggling with my trust and faith in certain areas. So I said to have real faith, trust. Oh, hello. Real faith, trust, hope, joy, and peace. And that's five. Ain't that something? Grace is five. Grace is power. It's a dispensation of time. It is. I'm telling you. Yes, it is. I'm just hearing something. When Paul said, if God graced me, that means to anoint, to make a way, to provide power, the opportunity. Amen. Grace means so much. I believe the greatest thing about grace is the power and opportunity. It is grace that gives us power over sin, over temptation. Hallelujah. Amen, saints. All right. So I got to put that back up there. But um, so yes, uh, we want to get where, get to a point in our walk with the Lord where we're not being moved by nothing. Amen. I'm going to give you guys a quick story, testimony. I was, I wanted to make a video yesterday, but I took time to go and get my two little nieces and spend time with them. So the day before, and this is, this is something else. This is you all, man, oh man, oh man. I needed um, a trampoline that I bought for my grandkids to be taken down because they really wasn't using it. So I was like, man, and the, the gentleman so kind to let me put it on his side of the, of his property. So I was like, wow, I really need to get that taken down. And then I had another situation and my money is so, oh Lord, that's okay. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I was like, okay, I need to deal with this, get this thing taken down and I need to get my grass cut. So 
Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yep. Mm -mm. And that's another thing. Let me divert. I am guilty. I've gotten a lot better, but I'm still not there. I'm going to be honest. When folks say something or do something that is unkind, unjust, horrible. I mean, you all, I used to muddle over it for weeks and months. I'm being honest. But I'm getting there. And what has helped me is my son saying, Mom, it is what it is. I say that several times a day. But I'm saying that because when people do things, it, it can blow your mind. It shouldn't. You should be able to say, well, now this is where this person is. They probably dealing with issues in their own tissues uh, you just never know. You, you, you just never know. You just never know. Not saying that this is always the case now, but some people can just be miserable, secret sins. They just don't like themselves. And you know what? They take it out on other people. Yes, indeedy. So anyway, I thought of a gentleman that had helped me actually move in this place. He helped me along with my brother and my nephew. So I was like, I'm going to call him and see if he can cut my grass. So you all, there has never been a time like it is now to find people of integrity and good help. And I'm not going to tell the story of why I ended up needing to get someone else to cut my grass. The devil is a lie. I'm not going to do it. It is what it is. Thank you, Judah. So I called the individual and I said, hey, I need my grass cut. I can only pay between 20, I mean, 25 to 30. And um, I and and I was thinking of the trampoline, but I didn't say anything. So let me, so watch this. So he said, well, I don't cut grass, but I know someone who does. And I was like, well, who? Because you all, I have to be so careful. I, I Keep going. So anyway, you all, so I said, well, who? And I was like, oh, please don't say this person. And but lo and behold, he did. He did. And it's not that this person is bad, you all. I just don't got time with nobody trying to holler at a sister because I don't want to answer. So don't holler because I'm not one that's going to answer. So I avoid these um, uh, situations and opportunities to not even take place. So now that the guy that I call, he know how I am. So any old ways... I said, Lord have mercy. I said, well, okay then. So he said they could come over and look at the yard. And I said, all right. I just wanted to get to, for it to get done. You, you guys, we is living in a time. It is beyond hard and difficult to find people of integrity and good health. Okay. So anyway, they come over and um, the gentleman, no wonder he said this. Um, yeah, he said, oh, I'll just charge you 25. And I said, well, no, I'll just pay you 30. That's no problem. You guys, I know that I was being hopeful, thinking it's going to be okay. But when folks stay so rough all the time and you all it's just rough and tough and it's really bad so we're walking towards the back and the young man that had helped me moved in here said shoot what you trying to do you trying to scrap this uh trampoline i said yes i am he said no i'm just kidding i said no well i'm not kidding so he said you serious i'm i was like yes i am so I'm like, wow, maybe I'll be able to take care of this and get the grass cut, you know? So anyway, long story short, this is the testimony I want to tell you all. 
I told the the the, the individual that was going to cut the grass. I said, um, I, "I you all, I really need you to cut the grass. I need I need it cut, not not rolled over." You all is bad. It's very bad out here, especially for single women. Lord, I want to go home for that reason. One of the, that reason alone sometime. Being a single woman, not finding good help, people with any type of integrity, professionalism. Wow. So, Lord help me. So anyway, I, they look at it. He says, I'll charge you 25. I said, brother, I'll just give you 30. So the brother that's going to take down the trampoline, I said, I'll give you this amount because I don't want to say the amount because I, yeah. No, yeah. So thank God he knows me and that brother looks out for me and I thank him. That's why I called him because how gracious he was to me when he helped me move in. So, whoo So you all, I waited and I waited. Waited about three hours. I said, Lord, I got to go get some food. So anyway, you all, I just said, I'm just going to go on and do the things I have to do. Maybe they're going to come Sunday. So anyway, but lo and behold, they came back and I was, yeah, I was getting food. So they called and he said, hey, we're here. And I said, oh, okay. And so <laughs> it's this Lord, come Lord Jesus, deliver me. So anyway, I said, okay. So I was like, well, wow. All right. Okay. So, cause I'm like, wow. I, yeah. You guys, some stuff, it just, whoo, it's, it's rough. It's rough out here, especially for single women. It's, it's rough. So anyway, I said, well, okay. I took the money that I had and was ready to pay them. And I got food and some gas. <clears throat> so I said, okay. Woo, boy, oh boy, oh boy. So I went and got the rest of the little money I had, you all. So I said, okay, I'm, at least this is going to get done. Thank you, Lord. So <laughs> I drove up, right? And I was looking at my grass. I said, no, Lord, please, Lord, no. You all, you know how they can be on the lawnmower or one that rides or mainly the ones that push. They can just lay the grass down and make it look like it's been cut. I said, uh, I, I, I spoke to both of you gentlemen. I'm not going to pay for this because this is not cut. And the individual said, well, you don't want it down to the, to the um, rocks. I said, uh, I want it cut, and this is not cut. I cannot pay for this. So the, the brother that I dealt with, he knew, and he was like, sis, I, I don't cut the grass. I took down it. I was like, I said, here's what I verbally agreed to give you, and I'm not paying for this. So you all, this is something else. Here's Here's the testimony. The money that I was going to give him for the grass, I said, oh, no, I, I, I'm not doing this. So I thought I put it in my purse and I couldn't find it. I said, the devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. So I went and got my nieces the next day. And I said, I'll just use that money to get the girl something, thinking that, I, I should find it somehow, some way it'll come up. It didn't. So I thought my little niece, one of them get in the car. They both get in the car and they say, she say, Auntie Marsha, I found this $20. And I said, look at the Lord. I said, niece, we'll go use this to get you guys a baby doll and some little baby doll clothes. I'm telling you, the Lord is so good. He is, he is so good. Anyway, I thank him because I didn't have any more to, oh my, he is so real. So you all, things like that, bless my heart that the Lord does. I, I just, I didn't cry because he didn't do my grass right. I didn't. I just, 
I, I told my son and he said, mom, I said, you to give me 15 minutes to vent. I'm allowed 15 minutes. And he said, but mom, you else might let it go. It is what it is. <laughs> I said, son, I know, I know. But I remember Pastor Diane used to teach us women because, you know, women do that. We have that bad, you all. Some of us have it really bad. Just mulling over something, keep talking about it, rehashing it. It's ugly. I, I said, it's ugly. It is. And I am working on it. But it looked like when so much bad stuff and people don't have integrity and just every time you turn, which way you, whoo, it's rough. It's rough. So you just said, mom, he said, and you are doing good, mom. He was trying to encourage me. And I don't think he, he wasn't lying to me, but he wants me to get where I can say, well, that it is what it is. And just keep it moving. I'm not there yet. Ooh, I'm not, I'm not finna lie. So anyway, <laughs> so I said, son, you're right. You is so right, Judah. So, um, yeah, that was amazing, man. That was just, I was like, she just picked it up in the back seat. And I think what happened was I was so disappointed and discouraged. I just, I thought I put the money in my purse, but I put it down like, let me, I'm not going to give him this. No. So anyway, we is just, it's mighty rough out here. It's, it's mighty rough. So you all pray for me. <laughs> Because you be trying to find good help, you know, but I, I knew it. You you be knowing in your Noah, mm, there is a reason for doubt. Pastor Diane taught us that too. Don't never say, oh, it's okay. When, no, doubt is for a reason. And she would say, there's never any benefit in doubt. Doubt is an indicator. It's telling you something. Listen to it. Wow. So, okay, praise God. Lord, help me. <laughs> so, anyway, you all, praise the Lord. At least the trampoline is gone. Thank you, Jesus. It was pretty nice size. I bought it for my granddaughter and my grandson. So, when they pr come over and they play, because they got one up at the other grandma's. So, I said, well, let me try to get one. I got it years ago. Like, wow. Almost three years ago, got it from Walmart. It was like $200. Boy, that's okay. Anyway, I am very grateful that thing was taken down and taken. Thank you, Jesus. So, it's okay. It's going to be all right. You guys keep me lifted up. It is, ooh, whoo, it is not easy being a single woman. Nope. Because then when you get help from some men, they think they can try to, you know, hit on you or flirt with you and see you all. I don't got time for that. I don't look for that. I don't think about that. Bless his holy name. I know. So anyway, yeah, that's why I didn't really want that individual to come because I've had encounters way, way in the past with this person. You know, sisters, well, brothers and sisters, you both know. So anyway, yeah, praise the Lord. When in doubt, Pay attention. So you all, back to faith. Yes, that blessed me. That's what I, I thought I just lost it or I gave them the 20, not meaning to give them the other 20. Yeah. Woo. Yes. See how I struggle, you all. I'm being real, being real. I just don't like to be taken advantage of and, and, and abused like that because that's a form of abuse to me, to be taken advantage of when you already said Hey, you know, I'll, no, I'll pay you the 30. It's rough out here. And if I told y'all the whole story, y'all would be like, no way. But I'm not going to do that. Nope. The Bible says love covers a multitude of sins. He who overlooks an offense is wise. Am I still stunned by the person that was doing my yard? I am. But guess what? It's still fresh. I truly forgive him. I love my brother. But when you when you done done something to show 
go above and beyond whether no matter who it be with and they take that act of kindness as weakness and that's what happens to me yep it does that's okay though when i say i you know they're saying bye girl bye girl and you can still might have a little chance but when i say bye girl bye girl bye girl or bye boy bye boy bye boy it's over it doesn't mean i don't love them you all mm -mm. You, some folks you just gotta let them go you just gotta let it be it is what it is so anyway when my niece found that twenty dollars i was like wow because I had already took them to the Dollar Tree store and got them some snacks and their mom made a pizza. And, you know, I was like, man, I really wanted to get them a little dolly. Because what happened was there was a little girl who came to town and her grandma or Mima, she called her Mima, didn't have no dolls for her. And I gave away not one of my niece's dolls. There's two of them. I gave the little girl two of the dollies. Because I have about five of them here for them. So I was like, I have to replace those dolls. And you know, amen. So you all, that's a little, I'm just, I am venting a little bit. You guys can see with some stuff I deal with. <laughs> it's, just, it's ridiculous. That's what it is. It's just, it's just ridiculousness. Anyway, so faith, hallelujah. The Lord wants our faith to be like a mustard seed. And this is what I learned about a mustard seed. It's probably, if it's not the smallest, it's one of the smallest seeds among herb seeds and seeds. And the thing about a mustard seed is its purity. Mustard seeds are very powerful. And he said, have faith as a mustard seed. And you want to think, what well, is he saying? Small faith? No mustard seeds are very powerful and they grow to be so big grow so we need for our faith to develop and grow stronger in our lord because he said is there anything too hard for me nothing and he said if we can believe all things are possible to those who believe amen so with that being said we're gonna get into some faith some more so you all get out your Bibles. Praise the Lord. It's uh, noon and it's a Monday. So get out your Bibles and turn to Luke chapter 21. You got, wow, you guys will be blessed. So let's pray um, and let's pray for our children. So Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for this time of rightly dividing the word of truth. We want to thank you, Lord, that we never have to fear or have doubt with you, anxiety, because you are the Lord. You are perfect on in all of your ways. You are just, you are holy. And you know, you know all, Father, you really do. So we just come to um, break open this good bread and this good meat and to take it so the substance of your word will uh Give our um, spirit man and even our body and our mind and soul what it needs to grow. Grow in our relationship with you, our faith, hope, trust, and joy. Amen. With you, Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, we are praying this for our own souls and our own minds and spirits. Amen. And Lord, we want to lift up our older children. We want to thank you, Lord, that you said train up a child in the way that they should go and when they are old, older they will not depart and even if they depart they'll come back just like the prodigal son so we thank you lord that we have the authority through jesus to stand in the gap for our children to come against every bondage chain of bondage of addiction rather it be cocaine crack cocaine trank heroin crystal meth uh, rather be alcohol. Some of our children are doing all of those things, Father. Uh, rather it be addiction to unclean um, spirits of homosexuality, bisexuality. And you all, I got a teaching coming up on that. The Lord said he wants me to address that because if there ever is a sin that has totally got people 
I'm talking past deceived, delusional. Because anytime everything is made, look, let me show you this. And I want to give, I want to give thanks to my sister, Leslie. I want to give thanks to Leslie because she showed me this analogy. Everything just about from a light bulb being screwed in to this top being put on this marker. I know y'all know what I'm talking about. Let me, let me lift up my foot here. Even you see this slipper? It goes on the foot. You see that? You see that? And when you take a plug and you put it into the socket, that is the way the components of a male and a female is supposed to work. Yeah, I'm, I'm coming after that demon because not the people who are bound by it and delusional and deceived. No, 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 no. No, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. This is you talking about demons that are a, a, assigned to people who are in this. I promise you, I promise you it's demonic. It is against the very nature of our creator, how he created us. And they know that defies the Lord is called an abomination. It's abominable. Oh, yeah, we is. We is. But not now. Oh, yeah. I, I, I got to do it. Got to do it. And I have dealt with that thing personally in my own family on several fronts. Relatives. Close relatives. Okay. Oh, yes. Yes. And I'll never forget I'll never forget um, the young woman said, how did she say it? Oh, yeah. She said, I'm willing to go to hell for this feeling. And I said, baby, baby, you don't you don't know what you're saying. Oh, no. And I went to you talking about fasting and interceding. See, some things cannot come out and be broken off of people without fasting. I'm telling you. I'm, and this is, that's a big demon. That thing is harder than some drugs to shake. Do you all, you, did you hear me? Yes. So anyway, you all, um, my Lord. Woo. So yes, we thank you, Heavenly Father, for delivering our older children. Even our young children, some of our young children are struggling with things, anger, depression, suicidal thoughts. We just come against all these unclean spirits. We don't have to yell. We don't have to get all hyped up. Father, it's not in that. It's in faith and trusting you. It's coming to you in boldness, knowing who you are. And we know that greater is he that is on the inside of us than that he that is the God of this world and his um, demonic hosts, Hasatan and all the fallen angels and demonic entities. We thank you that Jesus has authority over all of them, over Satan, his demonic hosts, fallen angels. Jesus, you are the power, the glory, and the dominion over all darkness, over all evil and wickedness. So we rebuke the enemy on the behalf of our older children, even our young children dealing with self-identity, like their body shapes and being teased and bullied at school. Yes, Father, we just come on the behalf of our children, especially our older children who are lost in this world. Some of them homeless, some of them out of their minds, Father. But Lord, you know, I read where you caused a man to go into the uh like the wilderness and turned him into a beast. He was crawling on all fours. And then you brought him back to his right mind. So Lord, you can save the chiefest of sinners. Nothing is too hard for you. And we just come against every demonic entity that has our children's souls and hearts and spirits and bodies entrapped and under their control. We plead the holy blood against every demonic entity. We plead your blood against the drug trink, against the drug uh, crystal meth, cocaine, crack cocaine, heroin, alcohol, nicotine, cigarettes. We plead marijuana. We plead your holy blood against all these unclean spirits. And we thank you, Lord, 
that we can use the same holy blood and ask that you would cover our children till they come to their right mind. And Holy Spirit, we ask that you would convict them, that you would press in heavy on their hearts, on their conscience, where you live in all human beings. You all, do you know every human being, I say human being, every human being is, is born in their conscience with God in the conscience. That's right. That's right. So, Father, we just plead your holy blood over their conscience. And we ask, Holy Spirit, that you would bring them right to their right conscience where God is in them. Yes, Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus. And we, we thank you, Lord, for assigning guardian angels to them, to their person, to protect them. And they're rising up and they're lying down wherever they go. We thank you that the blood will follow them and your holy angels would look over them till they come to their right mind. Don't let them have no peace until they completely and totally surrender to the Lord Jesus Christ. We know you're able to do it because you brought the park prodigal son to his right mind. He was eating the, in the pig pens, eating what the pigs eat. Yes. So, Lord, we know that you are able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we could hope, ask, or imagine. And we simply thank you for delivering and healing and saving our children and filling them with the precious Holy Spirit, sanctifying them by your word. We know you're able to do it, Lord. Nothing is too hard for you, nothing. And we thank you. We lift up every true beloved saint asking for strength for us, Lord, to finish strong. I remember when it says you will uh, give them a door, Revelations chapter three, I believe it is. I need to get that scripture. I have it. Let's see. When you said, you, you know that we have but a little strength. Lord, you know we're tired. But what we must do is hide in your presence. And you said, they that wait upon the Lord, shall mount up with the wings of an eagle. We shall run and not be um, weary. We shall walk and not faint. Amen. That's what, This is why we got to get in the word and in prayer, you all, we won't make it. And you got to worship the Lord because he's worthy. And you must praise him because he is good. Even when things aren't going the way we wish they would, the way we're hoping and praying they will, he remains faithful and he remains worthy irregardless. Amen. Talking to myself, you all, first. Amen. So I wanted to find where it says you have but a little strength. See you guys. I know you have but a little strength. I'll find it. That's okay. I will find it. I'll give you guys my word. And when I come back on, I'll read it. That'll be the first scripture I read. But this here is going to bless you all. Turn in your Bibles. Get out your sword. Get out your meat. Get out your milk. Get out your water. It's all these things for us. Amen. And turn to the book of Luke chapter 21. <clears throat> my goodness. <clears throat> and this is dealing with knowing what Jesus have said. He said, heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will never <clears throat> return void. Never. You guys hear me? Never. Mm -mm. He said, all that he has said, he's going to perform it and bring it, to bring it to pass. Amen? Well, I mean, it's getting chilly. <laughs> okay, so <clears throat> Luke chapter 21, verse 22. And this is in red. This is entirely in red. This is Jesus talking, you all. 22. For these be the days of vengeance. That all things which are written may be fulfilled. Did you all hear that? Vengeance. Okay. But woe, verse, verse 23. But woe unto them that are with child and to them that give suck. That means little children, even the little babies at the breast and drinking bottles. 
give suck in those days. And these are these days. Watch you guys. For there shall be great distress in the land and wrath upon these people. Watch this, you guys. The wrath. This is talking about now perilous times and the times of tribulation and wrath. We can have, we have tribulation as saints, you all, we do. But I'm trying to show you the scripture can be dual. It can have multi-layers, not just two. It can mean many things. So follow this. All right. And wrath upon these people, these people, you get that? These be the people who didn't make it, or those be the people who didn't make it in this harpazo, this catching away. Watch this. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword and shall be led away captive into all nations. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Now you see this is dual because it's actually talking about when the wrath of God happens, when the tribulation starts. But it is dual because it's telling you when it says until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. That's the dispensation of grace. That's the time period of grace. That is what we, we are in the last days of grace right now. I said right now. Okay. Now watch this. You're going to see how it, it can go from one Like it's time, like past, present, and tense. The Bible can be speaking of all three past, present, and tense in one, one, one scripture, one paragraph. This is good. It could be talking about a tense of time, past, present, or future. Now, this that I read first, that's going to be the near future. It says 22, for these be the days of vengeance. Okay, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. See that? That means that's past, present, and tense. Time, okay? And it says the days of vengeance. That's happening right now. That's happening right now. Oh, yes. Yes. And then look, it says, but woe unto them that are with child that has not happened yet. See how I say this can be different times it can be talking about the past it could be talking about the present it can be talking about the future amen all right but woe unto them verse 23 that are with child and to them that give suck in those days see that's not happened yet that is a present tense different tense past uh, uh past present and future tense this is different tense and it says, for there shall be great distress in the land. That has not happened yet. There is some distress and perilous times we're looking at and some tribulation that we go through. Amen. But that seven year thing with them different um, seals and bowls of wrath. No, 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 no. We're not there yet. And we're not supposed to even go into that. But we are upon those days. That we are upon that wrath and great wrath. The seals and the bowls of great wrath. That's the Lord. The first three and a half, that old devil, that old dragon called the devil called Satan, that old devil called the dragon. He ain't had his reign yet. Not yet, but it is, it is so upon us. It's so, so near. Okay. Now. Watch this, verse 24. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword and shall be led away captive into all nations. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles. Yes, until the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled. And you all see how dull this is. The Gentile nations are coming against Israel. If you guys been paying attention, it's, it's, it's getting very heavy. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. 
and there's going to be a war that the Lord is going to literally fight for Israel that have not happened yet, you all. That's coming. Amen. Yes, it is. <clears throat> and then they're going to be the last battle. They call that Armageddon. You see that? I don't think that's the last one. I think that the last one is when Jesus come back riding on them horses and some of his saints behind him, 10,000s of his saints on horses. Amen. Yes, you all. Okay. So 25. And there shall be signs. No, I missed 24. But I didn't finish it. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword and shall be led away, shall be led away captive into all nations and Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Okay. So right now, this is when the getting is getting good. You got to get on repenting and get right with the Lord, surrender to him. That's what I've noticed. A true saint or believer is someone who have totally surrendered to the Lord. They no longer, they know their life is not their own. Does that mean nobody don't fall short from time to time and sin now, then again, and then sometime? I, I didn't say that. I bet you they're not living a lifestyle of sin, a true saint. Okay? Amen. So now look at this. It's saying, wow, verse 25. And there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth distress of nations with perplexity and the seas and the waves roaring. That's happening right now. Oh, yes. Yeah. See this? See how this is speaking in many different tense, past, present, and future. 26. Man's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. And that's a host of things. I used to think that was only U to the F to the O, small s. I used to think the, the falling ones, because that's what those are. They, they got their little suits that they hide themselves in, the Nephilims. That's what they are. They're disembodied spirits and they then made bodies for them. That's what this is. That's what the U to the F to the O, small s, that's what they going, how they going to uh, explain away the harpazo, the catching away. Oh, yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> wow. So it say here, <clears throat> humans' hearts are going to fail them for fear and for looking See that like that's like a continuation looking after the things, after those things. Let me start again. Men's hearts, people's hearts failing them for fear and for looking a continued experience and seeing things and things happen after those things which are coming on the earth. So that's not just the U to the F to the O apostrophe S or just the S down there connected to it. That's also these uh, transhuman, transhuman uh, robots that look like uh, human beings. <clears throat> they done made flesh to put over them. Robot dogs, even gigantic demonic entities. I mean, you all, you, you really don't wanna be here. <clears throat> This is what's going to cause, cause them to have great fear for looking upon the things that's coming on the earth. You, you really don't want to be here. So, okay. So it's a whole bunch of things for the powers. So it says, which are coming on the earth for the powers of the heaven shall be shaken. Now see, that's Nibiru. That's that's so many different things that's going to be coming into the earth realm from the um, galactics out, out into this outer space. The people are seeing it already. Yet you all, mm -mm 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 -mm. you don't want to be here. You don't want to be here. And not to mention what's going to come out of the abyss. Mm -mm 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 -mm. 
And not just that, great earthquakes. I mean, the type of earthquakes that no one's ever experienced. Yes, Jesus did say it will be like a time that's never been, nor will there ever be a time after like it. it it's going to be out of this world. Hell on earth. Okay. Then it says, and look at this. And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with power and great glory. You hear that? Excuse me, you all. Oh, boy. And when these things begin to come to pass, see how it's dual tense? It's talking about the future. It's talking about the past. It's talking about the present. It says, and when these things begin to come to pass, see? Then look up and lift up your heads for your redemption draws nigh. No, ain't no rapture, ain't no catching away. Then bless the Lord. I wonder what's that talking about. I know exactly what that's talking about. You guys see that? Look at that. The son of man coming in the cloud with power and great glory. And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up. And lift up your heads, for your redemption draws near. Let's keep going. And he spoke to them a parable. Behold, the fig tree and all the trees. Trees mean nations and people. And fig tree means Israel, specifically. They're, they're uh, referred to as the fig tree generation. Okay, that's Israel. <clears throat> and all the trees, that's all other nations. When they now shoot forth, ye see and know of your know of your own selves that summer is nigh. Summer is nigh at hand. Now, I think the last day of summer was July, not July, September the 21st or the 22nd. Okay. Remember, this can be dual meaning. It can mean it's talking about nations and people, and it can mean a season. Okay, amen. So when now, I mean, sorry. When they now shoot forth, ye see. And now, now when it says they, that's the fig tree, you all. Ye see and know of your own selves that summer is now nigh at hand. Verse 31, so likewise ye. When you see these things come to pass, know ye that the kingdom of Yah is nigh at hand. You see that? So for people to be ignoring everything that's happening with Israel, did you see the prime minister um, Netanyahu? Did you see him with his board and the two and the map and that thing sounded so screeching? It sounded horrible. It sounded like a war cry. When he took the red marker and he said, now we will have a two-state solution. Excuse me, he didn't say that, but that's what it is. He was saying we will have peace and live in harmony. And it says when they say peace and safety, sudden destruction come upon them. So for people to be ignoring all of this, uh, the earthquakes, the all of this, the, so many of these are burning. It's unreal. It's unreal. It's unreal, you all. Um, not to mention uh, wickedness is getting increased, especially with folks that engaged in this. It's, it's unbelievable. Uh, not only that, when I tell you the B system is in full place, not full operation, but it is fully equipped and ready to go ready to go. Uh, this right here, see if I even got anything in here. I don't even know if I do. Wow. Hold on, guys. No, I thought I did. Anyway, just think of a dollar bill. It is, it been failed. There's no gold back in it, you all. It's over. And that's where you're going to have your digital ID. And if you have not which is absolutely the mark of the beast, 
you will not be able to function in society. The, the Bible did say in Revelation, you won't be able to buy, sell, or trade. You're not going to be able to get no food, go to the gym, pay your bills, put gas in your car. All of this is already set in place. It's not in full power because we are waiting for him to come in them clouds, waiting for that trumpet to blow. That's when he's going to have his reign. He's going to have his three and a half year reign. Now, how the Lord is going to shorten the days, I don't know. I don't really know because I'm not waiting for that. I'm waiting for him. Amen. Yes. Amen. Okay. All right. So, so likewise, ye, when ye see these things come to pass, know ye that the kingdom of Yah is not at hand. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass away to all be fulfilled. And we are that generation, you all. Yes, we are. Verse 33, heaven and earth shall pass away. And it is because he's going to make new heavens and new earth. Amen. By fire. Yes, indeed. But my word shall not pass away. That means it's not going to not perform. It's not going to return void. Everything the Lord say, he going to do it. He going to bring it to pass. Okay, verse 34. And take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfacing. You hear that? Surfacing. And that, I looked it up, it means overabundance and it means to gorge. And guess what it's talking about? Drinking. Yep, listen to what it says. And take heed, because you got a lot of Christians drinking today, y'all. Yes. Yep. And they not doing, see, some people, they take a little bit of red wine. The Bible says a little wine is good for the belly. If you take a little thing of red wine, Every day or at night, there is nothing wrong with that. But notice how he is saying, take heed to yourself, yourselves. At least at any time, your heart be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness. And that means, surfacing means overabundance or gorge. Mm hmm. Yep. And so I'll read it again. Take heed to yourself, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfacing and drunkenness and cares of this life. If you all can't see that this is so this is so real. This is so right on because. People are not just getting overwhelmed with trying to live, pay their bills. And that's what I have to watch. And no, you, are, you guys, I don't drink red wine, nothing. But I'm trying to say overwhelm. You can't allow yourself to be overwhelmed because the Lord said, I know what you have need of. He said, come, make your request known. He said, your father knows the things you have need of. See that? So the enemy is going to get, a, and he is getting a lot of believers because of just natural needs from day to day, month to month. Amen. That's right. So this is why he said, take heed to yourselves. At least at any time your hearts be overcharged. You could say overwhelmed, overcharged with sur surfeiting and drunkenness. And cares of this life, cares of this life. That's not a bad thing, but if you let it overwhelm you, we have an accountability and a responsibility to take care of our bills and do what we need to do. But there are, um, unfortunately, uh, surrounding circumstances of serious oppression out here. Oh, I'm living it, but that's okay. I'm going to wait on cheese. Yes, that's right. 
So look at that. And some folks got plenty and ain't hurting in no kind of way and they getting tipsy. Ain't that some Christians? They not just drinking, they're smoking marijuana. They're cutting up. They cutting up. Christians is cutting up out here. You know that I have smelled the smell of marijuana in the in the brick and mortar church buildings many times. And you know what they tell themselves, but it's legal now. So never mind if the Holy Spirit, because he may not be. You may be turned over and don't even know it yourself. Never mind asking the Holy Spirit, should I do this? And you all listen to me. There is a municipal need, uh, uh, <clears throat> municipal reason for the herb marijuana. I'm talking about the medical reason for children with autism, people with chronic pain. Best believe I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the folks that use the excuse saying I have real serious anxiety you keep lying to yourself. You keep deluding yourself if you want to. Folks is smoking that stuff to be high. And you guys don't know, it's messing up the pineal gland. Yes, it is. It's numbing your God conscience. Just as shutting out the voice of the Holy Spirit as it can do. See, y'all don't know that. But you're going to find it out coming this way. Let's deal with it. Mm-hmm. So look at this. It says the cares of this life and so that that day come upon you unawares. So do you see how this is literally talking about the catching away? It literally is. And then it was talking about things that have happened. Then it was talking about things to come with Israel. This this is something Verse 35, listen to this, saints, <clears throat> Christians, lukewarm and <clears throat> once saved, always saved. And wow, carnal Christians. It's so, it's so many communities, I just get tired of saying them all, but I have to do it. Look what it says. For as a snare, didn't it say that day? What day? The catching away, the harpazo, the rapture. To be caught up to meet Yeshua in them clouds. Look at this. So that day come upon you unawares. That's verse 34. 35. For as a snare shall it come on all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. We're going to wait in the water. We're just going to wait right there. Yes, we are. Yep. Yeah. For as a snare shall it come on all them that dwell on the face, all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. Everybody, everybody, everybody that was left behind and the people that rejected Jesus. 36. This is what I love. This is, I know the Lord led me here because this is not what I was going to um, teach on. I was going to do, if we continue in Jesus, then we are his disciples. But no, he said, go here first. Because that's the problem. Many Christians have not continued with him. Thirty-six. Watch, it's a ye, watch you therefore. And pray always. You know how many Christians say, we're not supposed to be watching. So should I listen to you or Jesus? Because this is in red. Watch you therefore and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape. People say, oh, we're escapisms. You got that right. Worthy to escape, counted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass. You hear what he said? Oh, it's going to come to pass. And to stand before the Son of Man. Who is that? Jesus. 
It's coming. He coming, you all. And most of you is going to be ca caught unawares. To be caught unaware. Yep. Yep. Ain't many going. Ain't many going. Because too many Christians are sufficing and in, in, in drunkenness. That's what it say. And cares of this life. He say in verse 34, and take heed to yourselves. Least at any time your hearts, because see, everything is about the heart with the Lord. People can judge you on the outside, but let me tell you something. The Lord knows every heart, every heart's motives and intents. He see our hearts at night. I said he looking at us at night time. Ain't that something? See, you can lie to me and lie to others, but you can't lie to the Lord. He see folks just a shacking up and, and living together, not married. See his children, Christians, masturbating, looking at pornography, nasty R-rated and X-rated movies. Yeah. Okay. Look at this drunkenness and cares of this life. And so that day come upon you unawares. Mm -mm. And, and now, how can it come upon you and you not be aware if you watching and praying? Mm -mm. See that when I read that, I said, oh my goodness, there it is. Ain't this something? Verse 37. And in that day, time, he was, I'm sorry, and in the day, and in, blah, 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 and in the daytime, he was teaching in the temple. And at night he went out and abode in the mount, in the mount that is called the Mount of Olives. And all the people came early in the morning to him in the temple for to hear him. So I'm going to title this, Will You Hear the Lord? Ain't that something? Will you hear the Lord? Say, and take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with, surf uh, oh, this word is new to me, surfacing and drunkenness, cares of this life. I just got to have a husband. I need a man. Really? Well, I'll tell you who husband you ought to have. His name is Jesus. And that's all the man you'll ever need. See, I know a lot of sisters don't want to hear that, but they're going to be very sorry. They're going to be. I wouldn't wish this on nobody. Because if the Lord ain't brought you nobody, perhaps you need to pray what uh, many of us have. I mean, there, there got to be more than just me. I know I ain't the only one. Okay. See, women don't want to learn how to be still. And to learn to be alone and satisfied in the spirit of the Lord. Mm -mm. I, they refuse to surrender. Okay. So this is what he is saying if you will hear him. Did you hear that? And all the people came early in the morning to him in the temple for to hear him. He said, in the day you hear my voice, harden not your heart, for now is the time of salvation. Today, ain't this something? And, and the Lord have folks speak for him. He speaks through us. He'll use a donkey, a jackass. He'll use a baby, a child. You all, if you get left behind, and worse, bust hell's fire wide 
open. You as a matter of factly chose to do so. You chose it. God sends no one to hell. Now he going to put you in there because you chose to go. He chose to go. Only he got the keys now. This is something else. This is this is as a child will listen to this and say, I love Jesus. I want to be with Jesus. Children got good sense. This is why the Lord say, unless you come like one of these little ones, you will not enter into the kingdom of heaven. For such is the kingdom of heaven. So I don't know how we can be once saved, always saved and drinking. and sexing, and twerking, and lying, and gossiping, slandering, <clears throat> slandering folks, malicious. Ain't that something? There has never, ever been no one saved, always saved. Never, never, never. Get right, church, and let's go home. Get right, church, and let's go home. Get right, church. Get right, church. Get right, church, and let's go home. I'm going home to be with Jesus. I'm going home to be with Jesus. I'm going home. I'm going home. I'm going home to be with Jesus. One more thing. If you don't want to go, don't hinder me. Mm. If you see when the old saints used to sing like this, I would be like, oh my goodness. <laughs> I did. I remember, and then our kids is the same way, but it's dangerous today because the grown folks ain't singing nothing today. That's why they changed the music to drop it like it's hot music and lyrics that came straight from the pits of hell. But these songs right here, if you don't want to go, don't hinder me. You don't want to go, don't hinder me because I'm going home. I'm going home. I'm going home to live with Jesus. Yes. Yes. You know, there was a song and it went like this. I'm running for my life. I'm running for my life. If anybody asks you, what's the matter with me? Tell them that I'm saved, sanctified, Holy Ghost filled, fire baptized. I'm running for my life. Woo! I'm running for my life. Woo! Yes, Lord. I'm running for my life. If anybody asks you, yep, I know they're talking about me. What's the matter with me? Tell them that I'm saved, sanctified, Holy Ghost filled, fire baptized. I'm running for my life. And what life? Eternal life. And didn't he say, run the race? Didn't he say, run? Paul said, run this race to win. And if you think there's not going to be obstacles and things to come to tempt you, to make you give up. And it don't, it's not always lust, you all. Because when the, when the, let me tell you something. When the enemy know you done with lust and, and, and having sex outside of marriage, he not going to bother you with that. No, he going to use your children. He going to use your money. He going to touch your health. And guess what? The Lord will allow him. But if you take these things to him, will be like Job, Joseph, the three Hebrew brothers. It'll be like them. Job did say, will we only praise him for the good and not the bad? See, 
This is when, if you know you're religious or you have a relationship with him. Religious folks going to ease their pain with drunkenness, twerkingness, lyingness, gossipness. That's what they're going to do. But see, those who are running for their lives, running for the real saints, we is laying aside the sins and the weights that so easily used to beset us. You know, like fornicating and masturbating and gossiping and lying and slandering and cheating and stealing and deceiving. See, when, if you come here, I'm going to give it to you just like the Holy Spirit is telling me to give it to you. I'm not going to be in trouble. So for those who are the true beloved saints, we is doing exactly what he said. Watch and pray. Always. Didn't I tell you on the last video, religious people don't pray. And if they are, they praying like that man that says that's trying to be heard and seen when they go to church on Sunday. I, I would love, even though I'm not really. I don't want to say a fly on the wall, but see, it don't matter about me. Thank you, Lord. The Lord is looking at all them Christians that have no prayer life when nobody's looking. And then they want to get up in the church where folks can hear them and see them on Wednesday night prayer and Bible study and Sunday morning. But they not praying Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. They're not praying Wednesday and Sunday either. They're just praying so that men can see them, so people can see them. So now he say, uh, watch. And you wonder why Christians saying, no, we got another 50 to 100 years. And when you bring up the Lord is coming soon, they just get so, they face turn, look like they ate 10 lemons. Do you hear me? They get all discombobulated. You know why? I'm going to get close. You know why? Because they live in their best life. They happy, wealthy, and healthy. They're not suffering for Christ's sake, for righteousness sake. No, they is having a mighty good time. Well, guess what, y'all? This is as good as it's going. <clears throat> this is as good as, let me get some water. Wow, it's just so dry. I was going to say it again. This is as good as it's getting for the lukewarm, the carnal, the once saved, always saved, itching communities. This is as good as it's going to get. And if you was watching, you would see that it really isn't good. Because you're not watching and you're religious and you're living your best life uh, now, you, you're not going to be... you. When that day come upon you unaware, that what you are all going to be. So, saints, it's time to set aside the sins and the weights. It, it is. It is. Even doubting God. I'm talking to me, you all. I'm talking to me. Yep, we're going to wait in the water because we need to locate ourselves. This is a tight time of not just watching, but repenting. This is a time to come naked before the Lord because you're already naked anyway. We is naked and undone before our holy almighty Yahweh. This is the time where we should just come on clean. right now and show enough live for the Lord while the getting is still good this is why he say when you Christians say oh there ain't no work you is so ignorant you guys are wow you do not know Jesus why would he say work while it's day for the night cometh and no man can work there is the working of the vineyard for souls and there's the working on your own soul because we is not yet there. We have not yet arrived. I'm, I'm, can I ask you all out there a question? Is you perfect? 
Do you not fall short from time to time? Is you Jesus? Not a one of us. And that's why you Christians keep talking about folks. Keep throwing your stones. You hear me? I ought to make a message on that. Keep throwing your rocks and your stones. Because guess what? You're going to be stoned. You see that? You are. You are. We are the most hatinous people in the world. Christians. Yeah. Yeah, I said it because God knows it's true. And the world know it. They laughing at the Christian community. And I can't blame them jumping around like a bunch of orangutans and monkeys talking about that's the Holy Spirit. And I'm not talking about the joy of the Lord and praising them. Oh, no, no, no. Y'all know exactly what I'm talking about. And it ain't just people of color that do it. It's all cultures do it. Unbelievable. Un Most of us was, was raised in religiosity. We wasn't raised to have a um, relationship with Jesus, taught how to do that. No, you know, we, we was taught churchiality and religiality, which is the same thing. How to go to church every Sunday. Don't miss. Make sure you wear your best. And I'm not talking about going to church, looking any kind of way. Y'all know I don't mean that. But people take more thought in what they putting on than they thought about picking up their Bible and praying. Ain't that something? It's unbelievable. And you all think y'all is going home with Jesus? No wonder he going to say, depart from me. I never knew you. He going to say, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. So now, ask yourself the question, and I'm about to get up off of here. Is attending church going to get you saved? It don't even make you saved. It's not going to get you saved up in this her this herpazo, this catching away, this harvest, this great, great going a home. Uh-uh. Mm -mm. You always time to stop playing church and be the church of the living Yahweh of Israel. Amen. I love you all. Let's deal with it while we yet have a little bit of time. I'll be back unless we meet in the air first, which I hope we do. But if not now, we're going to continue to occupy until he come. Go about doing good. <clears throat> for the glory, praise, and honor and worship of the Lord. And let's keep on working on our hearts, attitude, our mind, our soul, and our spirit. Amen? Amen. And the body too now. We got to drink more water. We got to find a way to eat healthier. And um, we got to do all these things. Amen? I love you all. God bless you.